Corbin's a simple way of pouring wine from any bottle you own by the glass. So you can come back and drink from that bottle again whenever you want to, next week, next month, even next year. So the way it works, it's got a simple clamp. You press a thin needle through the cork, tip the bottle sideways, you press a trigger, an inert gas, argon, used by winemakers, goes into the bottle and it pushes wine out of the bottle into your glass. And you can stop any time just by tipping up. The extra gas comes out. Remove the needle from the cork. And then because cork is elastic, it reseals. Greg, you invented this? Yes. Why? I started off um, drinking wine when I was a kid. I was 16 years old and I went up to California and fell in love with the stuff. And luckily, my wife loves it as well. But unluckily, unfortunately for both of us, she drinks a lot of red, I drink much more white. And so we were always compromising about which bottle to open. Uh, and then we only drank wines on the weekends or when friends came over. We rarely drank wine during the week. And certainly if we were drinking during the week, we weren't gonna open our best stuff because we fr frequently weren't finishing the bottle. So I remember thinking to myself, I wanna be able to drink any wine from any bottle I own in any quantity I want without having to think when I was gonna drink from the bottle again. I wanted wine without compromise. And if my wife wanted a different wine, why not? Where friends came over, instead of serving them what was open, I could serve them actually what they want. Um, so I, luckily when I was younger, uh, I work in medicine, uh, I had developed a, my first medical device, which was a chemotherapy delivery system for kids. It was, a, it was an implantable device that went underneath the skin uh, and you could access uh, the device with a needle over and over again during the course of the kid's chemotherapy. So I got really good at making needles that didn't do damage to things. So uh, then uh, the real stressor was my wife became pregnant and she stopped drinking completely. So now I was in this situation, I was like, I'm never drinking wine. I'm certainly never drinking the wine that I want. Uh, so I, I remember holding a bottle in my hand and this needle I developed for chemotherapy thinking there's got to be a way uh, I can drink wine from this bottle with, with using this needle because as soon as you pull the cork on a bottle you've committed to that wine. Uh, oxygen's come in and when you pour glug 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 more oxygen gets in uh, and that's the wine you're going to be drinking until it's gone whether you like it or not uh, whether you want another glass of it or not. Uh, so I thought if there was a way I could pour wine without removing the cork uh, then I could drink any wine I wanted whenever I wanted. And so how long did it take you from that moment until you met me? So uh, the child my wife was pregnant with is now about that tall and pats me <laughs> on the head uh, when he comes home from college. Uh, it, was, it was not quick. Um, I wanted to make sure that it worked. I wanted to be able to pour a glass from a bottle and then come back to that bottle and blind taste it against another bottle of the same wine and not be able to tell the difference two years, even five years later. So I spent eight years of testing. Uh, and a to in total 11 years of prototyping in my house. Uh, I, I had started to change completely the way that I drank uh, as I experimented with different needles, different gases, different pressures, different wines from around the world. Uh, but every night I had exactly what I wanted. And every night my wife had exactly what she wanted, both in terms of quantity as well as in terms of the wine itself. And when friends came over, I started putting 10, 11 bottles on the table, give them the prototypes of the Corbin and said, drink what you want. Uh, try three, four, or five different wines. You know, it doesn't matter. Even if it's just a couple who comes over. Um, we started doing pairings at home because uh, now we could pour from a white, a red, a dessert wine. Um, our, the way that we drank wine changed completely. We drank better, uh, better wines on average. We drank less, I think, on average, but we drank a great glass of wine or two every night of the week as opposed to only on weekends. That's uh, great. It was a lot of fun. And now Corbin's available not only to consumers, but also in restaurants. So restaurateurs can offer fabulous glasses by the glass without risking losing the bottle. That was my dream. I, I, you go to a restaurant and they've got a fabulous wine by the bottle list. And you're looking through these page after page of these incredible wines. Uh, but their wine by the glass list is often much shorter and it's lower quality wines that they're willing to throw away if they don't serve the last glass or two at the end of that day or the next day. So uh, it's been amazing as an inventor to see something that you desperately wanted to have happen as a consumer. I mean, I go to restaurants too. I wanted to be able to explore these incredible cellars that restaurants have built by the glass. Uh, and to see these wine programs that have developed here in Canada and the United States and then all over Europe and Australia and New Zealand. I just came back from China, uh, a small wine bar uh, in Shanghai, had a hundred wines by the glass. 
tiny little place. Just Corbin. Yeah, just Corbin. That's very satisfying. It was a blast. Well, it's interesting because today we did a little workshop with you where we had four burgundies that were red, four burgundy whites, and we were challenged to decide which ones were were Corvin six months ago right. and which ones weren't. We had uh, two people uh, who got it perfectly right uh, out of 25, 25 people that were there. So <laughs> and we I be... admit I got it wrong, dead wrong. I, the... I also got it wrong. So, uh, you know, it, it, it it's funny. It's um, you get wine professionals into a room doing, this is how I developed it. I brought it to winemakers and their wines and we would Corvin it together, sign and date the bottles, leave it with them. We would come back at six months and one year and two years. Uh, I've done one at five years with winemakers in Austria. And uh, it was one of the one of the Austrian winemakers who said, "I'm so frustrated. It's my wine, and I couldn't tell." But Chateau Latour uh, did exactly my test, but instead of the blind tasting, they did uh, chemical analysis on the wine. So they uh, took a half case of Chateau Latour 11 and they corabined one bottle every month, uh, and then they would uh, corabin another bottle from that same half case, uh, you know, one bottle per month, to see both how the one that was corabined five times over five months changed and then how each of the different five bottles that they tested against the original one changed. And they said that all of the variation in the one bottle they corbin five times was within the variation of the, of the full six bottles at the start. Oh, I see. So they, they basically said bottle to bottle variability, it's all within that. And didn't they tweet those results? They did, yeah. Nice. It scared the Public, pants out of right? it. Right? They, 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 the first one, they were they like, yeah, we just corbin and, and I'd never done this test. They, they poured it, did the free and total SO2 and oxidation and all that. I was like, oh no, I have no idea. Yes. And uh, they came back and said, oh, it works. And uh, invited me back and I was drinking with them for hours. It was, it was spectacular. Well, Life changing. Well, thanks, thanks, Greg. Cheers. This was fabulous. And Thank I'm you so glad that you created this because I think it's, uh, I think it's an important development. Well, yeah. The rest of the world. Yeah, I think it, wine is joy. Uh, it's part of the quality of life. Well, here's the fact. Yeah, cheers. Great to meet you.